Hi folks, it's Thomas Henson here with thomashenson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. And so today's question comes in from a viewer. Um, if you have a question, put it in the comment section here below or you can reach out to me on thomashenson forward slash big questions. I'll do my best to answer your questions. So this one came in around, hey, you know, is software going to replace data science? And whenever I think about software, specifically, we're probably talking about artificial intelligence, right? Is artificial intelligence or you know, machine learning or deep learning or, you know, any of those models, are we going to be able to build models that can replace the data scientist? So this is kind of a, you know, a common theme. If you go out there and Google anything right now, you can see, you know, will AI replace, you know, lawyers, will AI replace doctors, all kinds of different things. And so, you know, unequivocally, you know, I think the short answer is no, but I'm going to talk, you know, about what I think, you know, or some of the reasons that I don't think that AI is going to replace data scientists. And then also at the end, I'm going to give you some industry experts on what they think and what they've said about that whole concept. So let's jump in. Let's talk a little bit about what a data scientist is and then talk about how we would, you know, even begin to look at how AI would replace that. So remember before when we talked about data scientists in the past, you know, these are, you know, these are the types of people that are trying to work on, you know, finding data that can build a model that might, you know, be able to predict an outcome, right? Like, you know, if we can predict the outcome, then maybe we can do something prescriptive, right? Like, hey, this is what's going to happen. So let's, you know, let's, let's do this, this portion here after something happens, right? Like, so think of if you're creating, use it, building a model to detect insider threats, right? So you want to be able to decide, okay, does this user, maybe they're potentially an insider threat, once you've identified that, maybe you can drop their access, right? So be prescriptive around it, you know, drop access to the, that they have to certain directories, certain folders, and then also, you know, alert security, right? So we're wanting to be able to build applications and mo or models like that, that can be able to help. So can artificial intelligence do all that kind of take the data scientist out? I don't believe that's the case, right? Like, I think that's very, very hard. I think if we really look at AI and what's going on right now, anytime you hear the word AI, replace that with automation and you're like, okay, now I understand what's going on because really we're not at the point where, you know, we're actually building these super intelligent systems, kind of like what you see in Hollywood. So I'm going to give you three different reasons around why I think that, you know, AI is not going to replace or software is not going to replace data scientists. So the first thing is, you know, when we think about it, artificial intelligence has been around for quite some time. The term has, you know, we're getting better with our models. We're kind of, you know, if you, if if you listen and read to some of the books that I've, I've read, you know, we're in that implementation phase where we're, we're putting these things out there. Um, but if you if you really look at it, you know, even in the past when we talk about, you know, the world's best chess player versus, you know, artificial intelligence, you know, we, we got to a point, you know, in the late 90s where the world's best chess player could win. Right. Or I'm sorry, the uh, machine would beat the world's best chess player. However, if you took a medium, you know, uh, machine or, you know, artificial intelligence that was pretty good at chess you paired it with a pretty good or, you know, an advanced uh, human chess player, they could beat the world's best, you know, you know, machine learning model, right? Or deep learning or AI chess player. So same thing here. You know, I think what we're doing, I think the tools and the skills that you're seeing being implemented for data scientists are about how do we can, how can we can help, right? How, what are the types of tools that can help us identify quickly, maybe some complex algorithms that would work, right? Like, hey, you know, should I use a generative adversarial network here? Should I use, you know, a convolutional neural network or different different types of things there? Same thing that we're seeing in the medical industry, right? Like doctors aren't going to be taken out of the loop, but doctors are going to be given maybe a voice assistant, right? That you can prescribe and give the different, you know, hey, you know, these are some of the symptoms that we're seeing. What are some of the latest, you know, journal articles and giving a summary to that versus, you know, like your data scientist or your medical, you know, your, somebody in the medical field, they're having to go out and, you know, there's always research and research papers that they could be reading and could be intaking. Same thing here, right? Like you're going to have assistance as a data scientist to be able to say, hey, look, what are like, you know, run some stats on this and let's see what models might uh, be good indicators here. So I'm still in the loop, right? I'm still, you know, deciding what we're going to do from that model, but it's going to help me streamline and get faster what we're doing. So number two, uh, really simple, just go out there and look at the uh, talent gap, right? Like we're still looking for data scientists, right? That's go do a Google search and you're finding that there's a ton of different um, open open job applicants. Like if you go to any kind of um, symposium, so there was a symposium over at uh, Georgia Tech and, you know, one of the, you know, one of the people from Google there was talking and they were like, hey man, I will take every PhD or, 
even master's level candidate you have around data science and st statistics and everything like that. So there's still a huge, huge talent gap there. And I don't think it's going to be cured by AI. Like I said, I think it's going to be about automating and then maybe AI can help us to train um, better humans that can fill those roles. But I don't, you know, I think that's another indication that, man, I don't even know that we're, we're at our peak uh, in data science uh, just from a hype cycle perspective either. And number three, the industry experts, right? Like if you look at Andrew Ning, um, you look at uh, Kai Fu Lee, you look at what their predictions are. Data science is one of the, in one of those quadrants where it's like, hey, it's not, it's not as, it's not a simple task that can be repetitive, right? Like you've all seen the videos where it's like, hey, you know, um, robots and you know, uh, you know, AI can help uh, on assembly lines, right? Like it's a, it's a kind of a controlled environment. Data science is not controlled. It's kind of like you know, it's, it's out there, it's in the wild, and you're having to. All right, this model, or I mean, even ETL, we can't we can't even fix ETL, right? Like you know, we're still we're still having to rely on human beings to help and automate, you know, and and make sure that we're curating the right data sets too. So we're still not at that point, and even if we do get to that point from an ETL perspective, we're still going to have to have data scientists. So no AI will not replace data scientists in in the near future. All that subject to change, right? There could be advances in technology in ten years that I don't foresee. I'm not a you know I'm not a futurist. Yep, maybe. I don't know, I don't know how you, I'm not, I don't have enough uh, education, I guess, or understanding to be that. But if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe so that you never miss an episode of Big Data, Big Questions and ring that bell. And until next time, see you again on Big Data, Big Questions.